This is Jason Rouse, and uh, welcome to the Safe Word Podcast. My guest on the show today, uh, local, which is probably uh, a rare breed. I don't think I've had anybody who was actually uh, born and uh, continued to have an education in the city of Austin. I can't even imagine what it was like having to learn how to hog tie uh, as, as part of your PE. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Good, man. Good. Thanks yeah? for you're, uh, I like your place, man. There's a lot less dead, you know, farm animals than I thought there would be. But this isn't I mean, my place. Moved, you just moved in. <laughs> I killed a family that uh, was living here uh, about a week and a half ago, and I did want to talk to you about murder. Sweet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's happening? Like, um, you know, I wanted to shoot some guns. Yeah, that was our that was our first plan. That was our first plan was to uh, have me shoot some high powered uh, assault rifles. Yeah, at um, blow up dolls at the right. foot of your driveway at your parents' yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> Quarter sticks of dynamite <laughs> and a, ten gallons of gasoline <laughs> diesel. Have you had a, Have you had a chance to shoot like? Because I know you've been shooting a bit since you got here, but no, have you had a chance for. I like, haven't had a shot. You haven't had a single shot here. No, you have. Man. No. Oh, man. I knew I was going to get to it. Right, eventually. I, I, yeah. Look, I had a, uh, there's like a kind of a three year uh, plan for Austin. Okay. And uh, I knew just by association living, I, first of all, I don't know how many people I've seen pull machine guns out of their trunks right. <laughs> in, in a, uh, a shopping mall parking lot yeah. just to show me. By, by year three, you're going to own a bazooka. Is, that's the ultimate goal. Ooh, dude, that's why I got this wall like this. I'm going to set it up for just all an arsenal. Yeah, like that scene in uh, Kick Ass with just all the weapons mounted on the yes. wall, or like Boondock Saints or something Any like that. Any James Bond yeah, type yeah. of uh, weaponry for right. sure. Uh, do you have a gun preference? I'm a big Walther guy. What's like, a Walther? Walther is a brand. They were the ones that made the the PPK was the the Can gun you that talk James. Talk a little closer. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, um, the, uh, the the PPK was what James Bond used. Yes, you know that fancy little thing. It's it's you know what I like it because at the bottom of it, it kind of swoops down like that. Right. Yeah. It looks almost like a makeup holder. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. very sleek. It's a keychain actually, so you can clip it onto your your carabiner. But it, it would totally. I saw one recently. I never mm. ever seen one, but we did that uh, show at the uh, uh, Texas Gun. I did that recently. Yeah. Actually, that was super fun. And they let you go behind the counter and yeah. play with shit. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the most wildest shit. I mean, nothing bad has ever happened from uh, comedians uh, drinking and playing with guns. I don't think anything bad has ever happened there. No, no, <laughs> they're very strict. As much as uh, it was, as we were able to be, is it tactile? Mm. Is it the word we he? I was gawking, you know. Yeah. Uh, and he said, come here, pick up something. What, yeah. do you, what do you think? And I'm thinking, well, this is a start, and I think this is number two. So I, I have a question, actually, mm. like, you know, living in Canada and stuff. What were your expectations as far as guns moving to Texas, obviously different from the rest of the United States, and then, like, compared to what you've actually experienced here? Like, was it was it straight on from what you were expecting, or was it a there bit was, wilder? There was... Um, I expected a little more hats and spurs. Right, yeah. With, Tumbleweeds with and the like gun. swinging doors and shit. That's, yeah, of course. I think that's part of what keeps the tourism, yeah. too. Is some people do want to see something that was shown in a, a spaghetti yeah. restaurant. Yeah. I think, I think I like saloon doors. Right. They're convenient. It's either, you know, there's always, first of all, let's be honest, 
Have you ever come through saloon doors and not had a smile on your face on the other side? I've only been I've only been through one set of swinging doors, and it was in Colorado, I think. I don't think ever in Texas. Were they but... the the uh, blinded ones that were kind of yeah, like yeah. half? And yeah, you, yeah. Ee, yep. They swing back. Yeah. Terrible invention, but there's something about coming They're through saloon doors. They're barely doors. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, how they even are considered doors, but. I don't know what they're keeping out. I'm pretty sure you could ride a horse straight into that thing. Yeah, no bouncer yeah. in swinging doors <laughs> yeah. on a bar. Yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? It's I think you... that's what it was. It was more or less it would just spit out drunks. <laughs> exactly. We'd get tossed out. It made it so much easier to just kick a guy flying yeah. into the streets. You know, If you had a handle on that sucker, he's just going to hit it and probably break it. Maybe that's what it was, was they were just breaking too many doors, and they were like, we need something easier for when people get thrown out of here. I think that's it. Yeah. Well, you've got, like, look, that cowboy shit is is not like the movies. No. (laughs) You know what I mean? You get guys or, like, robbing stage coaches and Mm -hmm. living out. Like, anybody who's been camping in the desert for, like, 10 years is going to have some social problems when he gets to town. Yeah. That guy's getting tossed. Uh Uh-huh. First of all, he probably hasn't had a drink. Who knows how long? Who knows how long? And now he's like, hand me the whole bottle. Yeah. I got good gold flicks rush. A, yeah, flicks a coin across the counter. Yeah. And right boom. in the guy's face. Yeah. <laughs> just flicks his cigarette butt in the guy's face and then slams his money down and says, bring me your best wife. Yeah. <laughs> that happened a lot. Yeah, dude, those were the good old days. Can you imagine? Yeah, except the time. Jason Rouse and Ben Horn tumbling through town on, on those days. It'd be. We'd be like the boondock cunts. We'd probably be dead in a matter of minutes. Well, I would definitely get hung. <laughs> they would totally hang me. But they would keep me around for a minute. I've always had this fantasy of my own execution. And uh, at the um, last second before I meet my demise, I find magic in the air and the comedy gods give me one line just one just the perfect one-liner <laughs> to get out and not only that he is the executioner is humiliated yeah. by the, what i've said and i've turned the audience against him now they're booing me because they think <laughs> booing, booing him because i'm hilarious yeah well, did you ever watch that um that uh that documentary about like uh fuck i forgot what it was called or even what it was streamed on but it was about um like dangerous places in the world to do comedy. Ooh. And there was this guy and uh, man, I'm, I'm going to botch this so bad. Cause I don't, I remember so few details, but he was like a, a prisoner. Wisconsin. And, yeah. Brutal <laughs> guy with a knife in his teeth on stage. You guys like to laugh. <laughs> Just beer cheese. Where, on his where, breath. where would be like, it was like in pl- the middle East somewhere, but he was a prisoner and he, um, he made the guards laugh so much that they ended up letting him live. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm the guy on the chopping that block guy. who makes yeah. a pussy fart joke yeah. and wins over the You know what? This guy's audience. all right. Yeah. This guy's all right. Yeah, he did, it's not a violent crime. He didn't hurt anybody. He just, he did some like, the guy's a goat fucker. Yeah. I mean, let him go. Who's let he really go. hurting? Who's he hurting? Exile. Yeah. Exile yeah. him. But this guy... That's his whole M.O. Yeah. The guy gets purposely caught in a village fucking a goat so that he gets a chance to have the best show of yeah. his life. He needs that the pressure. The ultimate challenge. Yeah. He needs the pressure. <laughs> he needs that kind of pressure of being yeah. not only, fuck you, he's a sadist, but yeah. also the most darkest comedian. I'm jealous of this guy. I'm I creating. mean, you've, you've clearly thought this through. What do you think, you're, what do you think that one-liner would be? Like... Rope around your neck right now. What is that one liner? Well, what do we got here? We got, we got, what are we doing? Is it rope or axe? Can I go axe? We can go axe. Yeah. yeah. Because I can't talk and do a tap dance at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not, I don't get that Martin Short gene, you know, that song and dance man. Yeah. I can't do that. Is my guitar, is my guitar close by? (laughs) Can I use a kazoo? (laughs) I close on the kazoo and I can't do that with a rope around my neck. I, I, I can't close without the kazoo. <laughs> yeah. But, and these are the kind of arguments. Like, oh, this is not a production. Yeah. You're oh, dying. They, is there a kazoo nearby? Does anybody have a kazoo? Yeah, We're going to give this guy he's one chance. It out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. They're like, let him use a kazoo. Some cocksucker in the front row is like, dude, I got a kazoo. Let's just see what happens. But he's a player. All right, so. He's a player. Yeah. This is a whole fucking scam this guy runs. Mm-hmm. He gets caught. Wink, wink, mm. fucking a goat. Right. The locals not having it. Yeah. Sure. We're not doing that this year. We're trying to get up to forks and knives. Yeah. You know, maybe a table. 
maybe somebody's not going to die of a, a read like some sort of skin uh, uh, thing where you're melting a bit and it's gross, like a bolo, but more yeah. like a um, like a meringue, but a more pie. melty, yeah, yeah, like yeah. fondue, yeah, fondant, fondant, and um, you get to uh, he goes caught, uh, jailed. Mm-hmm. So now this right. is his foreplay aspect of it. So he's got some time to to mull it over, to think about what well, how this, I'm gonna how I'm gonna get out of this. Well, that's the thing. He's right material now about the guards. Right. As he's going through his legal process, and he is you, by the way. We're still on that, right? I'm I'm gonna audition for the part. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it without a condom. Sure. <laughs> okay. I can't fuck. I can't have skin on skin with an animal. It's kind of weird. Isn't it? If they're I, touching, if the meat is touching the other meat. What if it's a goat skin condom? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I think saying? that's how they you might find a that. loophole. Isn't that that sheep stomach? Maybe that's your one liner. Oh, that's Haggis. Hey, everybody. Can it you was fuck with goat. Haggis? I, maybe. Because it's a sheep stomach. Yeah. Guy but gets That might up be there. your loophole into legality in this whole thing. He's got the is kazoo. It wrong? He's first of all, he's got a bit of a smattering yeah, yeah. from the crowd. There's 10% of the people who are like, yeah. Uh, let's do the kazoo. Let's see the kazoo. <laughs> so he's he's on the chopping block, mm-hmm. head, and just before the guy's about to bring the axe down on the back of the neck, the guy quickly pulls down his pants, assholes the kazoo, and lets one rip, and the crowd goes fucking nuts, nuts. <laughs> so it, it's like, a fart joke. Like yes, totally. It transcends. He doesn't even speak the local language. Right. This guy. But everybody speaks fart joke. With a kazoo, that's the one. That's that's a good one. That's not even a one liner. He doesn't even no care. lines no lines necessary. But this guy is a little nervous. This town's a little more aggro about goat fuckers mm-hmm. than most people, you know. So it's a um the penalties are very severe there. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> yet he uh, turns the crowd to him. And gets out. Is that is that? Is how do you how release it though? How do they? How does the town maintain its order by letting this guy? Because it, look, it first of all, you know how the world is now. Can you imagine sure. then? It's a thumbs up, thumbs down. Right. There's no emojis. Mm-hmm. There's people <laughs> going, "Fuck, kill this guy." I mean, I saw him do that joke at the other. <laughs> you know, I'm from the neighboring <laughs> town. This guy is a fucking psycho. They're outing him, right? Fuck you. His real name's Peter. <laughs> I I think, I mean, you can't go, I mean, punishment free. There's got to be something, right? Stocks. So it's, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. And then people just beam you with kazoos for okay. the next And rotten days. produce, yeah. buckets of shit. But right. then at the very end, as he's exiled to the edge of the forest, after they've just been throwing anything that they can verbally abusing him as he runs towards he turns back around in the stocks and without even touching his cock it goes off like a water sprinkler and just comes all over their fucking crops. like a guar concert just showering totally it. yeah i got asked to open for guar and i said no really yeah you turned down guar over 20 years ago singer was from a canadian guy really yeah okay where are they from richmond virginia okay yeah, I don't know how the Canadian singer, like he, he explained it to me at a uh, Earache Records Christmas party. I see this metal. What is, what is Guar like at a Christmas party? Well, no, he was just a guy in a hockey jersey. Okay, and I'm like, dude, are you from Canada? He goes, oh no, no, no. I was uh, I was born there, but I've been raised in so and so, and uh, I play in a band called Guar. I'm like, no way. Yeah. Uh, Urungus, what's his name? I think it. Yeah. You. Uh, Fuck, there's all the metalheads are screaming at yeah. me right now. How I could you I'm not as well. well, they all had insane names. Yeah. So. Now they have a female singer. Oh, that's right, because he passed away recently, right? Yeah. In the past few years. That was, uh, there's been a lot of singers. What are you, we were talking earlier about first shows and stuff, and you said Kiss. What tour was that? Kiss. One of their it was retirement the, tours? Yeah, it was the farewell tour. No. Was, yeah, I swear to God. Tw- 2000, fuck me. <laughs> I was, 
I might have been ten, maybe younger. Okay. So it was who was nine, the, who was the cool person in your family to take you to kiss? My class? dad. Whoa. My dad. Uh, my dad was a big uh, like rock guy. That's cool. I, I eventually graduated to like metal from there, you know. But yeah, I grew up on Kiss and Aerosmith. Man, yeah. that was my shit back when I was a kid. Um, and then yeah, I remember one day it was like, it was for my birthday actually. It might have been like my eighth or ninth birthday. And he was like, I can't even keep this from, because I was such a huge Kiss fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, I can't even keep this from you anymore. I got Kiss tickets for your birthday. I was like, fuck. I'm fucking freaked out. My second concert was Aerosmith. But uh, As far as a first concert being Kiss, you know, regardless if you're a fan of the music, that's a production. Yeah. That's like Andrew wild. Lloyd Webber. Yeah, I mean, even before Kiss went on, Ted Nugent shot a flaming yeah. arrow through his guitar. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember watching that, being like, "This seems dangerous." Like, <laughs> an eight-year-old, and like, if he misses, somebody, yeah, somebody in the front row is getting a flaming arrow to the neck. But I was like, well, "That's pretty rock and roll." So, I mean, even if it goes bad, it's still it's still awesome. Uh, and Justice for All, Metallica, nice eighty-eight. That was uh, your first concert. That was my first concert. Uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Cops Coliseum, eighty-eight. Floor seats, seventh row, my ears rang for Holy three shit. days. Shortly after that, there was a mishap on stage, and the justice, they would pull a, um, I was so like, how old were you? 17. Okay. Wow, it was that 17? long before you went to your first concert? Yeah, because uh, it was all dudes mm-hmm. at my school, and it wasn't because they were good. <laughs> It was a, a, a housing of terrorists, yeah. to be honest with Future you. Future terrorists? Yeah, most definitely. I, uh, I definitely terrorized the city of Hamilton. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he's getting his head chopped off. Yeah. Hecklers. There's a guy who saw it. He's doing the same act as yeah. he did before. Boo, boo, boo. Butt kazoo. Butt kazoo. And now there's like. They, now there's a dilemma between the people that are kind of like, really? You've seen this before? And they're like, yeah, this guy. And he's got a picture he drew of him. doing. I drew this of him last week. He has, see the kazoo? It does it's look in kazoo, his ass. Yeah. yeah that's, you can see the date on this, on this animal skin. But anyway, yeah, to uh, win over uh, an audience at the very end of your uh, life is fantastic. How did, um, who, do you remember who opened for Metallica? Queensryche. No, that's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, I didn't really appreciate it that much at that time. Right. Uh, but looking back, Operation Mind Crime tour mm-hmm. was yeah, yeah. a pretty epic uh, uh, a tour. Uh, second show, here's one. Faith No More, Soundgarden, wow. and Voivod. And then I think Lollapalooza, 91. Wow. I think was the following one. 91 or 92. Tool, Tool was on the side stage. That's crazy. On a small stage, maybe about as big as my living room. Yeah. It was insane. Uh, they were quickly moved up to the main stage afterwards sure, next yeah. to Alice in Chains and yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Babes in Toyland. I don't know if they got pulled off the headliner spot, but they were on at the same time as Tool. And it literally, when you see a main stage audience move to a side stage mm-hmm. away from one of the headline acts, yeah. It can really mess with your. Uh, but listen, look like at Tool. Yeah. Come on, it's a, like a, a. It's the new version of a, of a Rush cult. Uh, they love them. Yeah, yeah. Tool has a very unique like following and fan base. Do you like, like Tool? They, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. Do you play I, drums? <clears throat> I don't know, no. but I, I'll be honest. As far as like Maynard Keenan's projects. I'm I'm a huge Pussifer guy. Yeah, like I love all of it, but I mean, Perfect um, Circle. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but um, you know, I mean, obviously, Tool and a Perfect Circle are releasing some new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but as shitty as this may sound, it's like I I listen to it. I'm like, okay, I've heard this before. You know, this isn't really blowing my socks off. But then when when he started doing like Pussifer stuff, I was like, this is fucking weird yeah. and it's wild and it's bringing me back to like the old like just. And it's a duet. There's a female yeah, right. voice in that yeah. band that's kind of nice. Yeah. Because usually he's the kind of steam engine behind right. that uh, those performances. I walked out of a Tool show. I saw Tool 91, and then again, the Opiate uh, EP had just come out during mm-hmm. the, the uh, Lollapalooza tour. Mm-hmm. 
and then uh, Undertow came out and sobered. It was over. Right. It yeah. was over. Every was what, music video right. channel was playing that over and over and over again. Every jock in, in the city was now a Tool fan. Yeah. Uh, which killed it, a lot of it for me. And then when I started going, it came full circle. It became like a Nickelback concert to a comic book convention. I'm like, how many fucking fat chicks can you see at a rock concert? Stop it. Don't bring your fucking wife. Bring your mistress. I, uh, like I, at a, be you know, Behemoth? Yeah, oh, I love Behemoth. Did man. you see the video of the guy fucking his girlfriend in the stands <laughs> no the v there's a video on youtube behemoth is fucking ripping through it and this guy's they put a spot he's cheering jesus wait how long ago, was ago? This? maybe three years ago no shit four years ago yeah that's great dude i so you posted that video recently it was behemoth like playing at one of your friend's houses or yeah some yeah shit, right? <laughs> i saw it, i was blown away because big big behemoth fan and the first time i saw him was uh ozfest was that 2007 when they made it free? It was like my dream as a kid to go to Ozfest. Like every lineup was just yeah. the best lineup I'd it ever like seen. It was the you know? first lineup in North America that was comparable to a European music right, festival. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And it was like yeah, something like that. And um, and like I was just, but I could never afford it. You know, I'm a kid. Those tickets were expensive. Yeah. And then two hundred and seventy bucks for with taxes. Lawn, yeah, for yeah, lawn yeah. seats. Yeah, you know. And um, uh, fucking the one year they made it free, uh, I. I knew a guy that um, did a, a that like ran the metal show on the local radio station, and he hooked me up with tickets. Um, and uh, Behemoth was actually I wasn't really familiar with Behemoth at the time. They were one of the few bands that I wasn't super interested in seeing. Like there was a bunch of other people that I really wanted to see. And then I remember um, Behemoth was coming on, and um, me and my friend decided like we were gonna go like find a, a place to hide and just smoke a bunch of weed. So it might have been like two songs in. We're you ripping look like weed. you hide when you smoke pot. I mean, this was I was a teenager, and you know, it was, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You know, I was still buying dirt weed. Yeah, but, you know, I, I didn't smoke pot until I was uh, in my twenty. Really? It, actually, twenty. Yeah. 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 I I was you know I was a scared kid, but um, plus a friend of mine, to be fair, uh, did get kicked Arrested? out for smoking weed oh. kicked out of the show for smoking weed like some security guard was he like he was just blazing it up in the middle of you know out in the open and they some security guard was like as out. you should right exactly as it's you fucking should. Ozfest. who what the fuck is he heard i mean not only that thing, it's america right i mean but also this is 14 <laughs> years ago you yeah. know it was a little bit different back then is this I mean, austin yeah or san antonio san antonio yeah okay. yeah but um nice place by the way <laughs> no shit, dude. Jesus. Me and my roommate just went to San Antonio. We did a few shows there. And the second we pulled off the highway and started turning towards the venue, yeah. my my uh, roommate, Craig Fergola, he looked around and he's like, San Antonio, huh? What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, no yeah. Shit, dude. It does have a yuck factor. <laughs> it was so fucking gross. And we live in a shitty part of yeah. you know, Austin, right across the street from you, but in, in the shittier part. Is it like, shitty over there? It's, I mean, it's not shitty, but it's it doesn't look great. If you were just driving through, like, hmm, should I invest in property oh, here? You're probably yeah, yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. no. No, know? no, totally. Anything that is not nailed down in that area is stole, <laughs> stolen, stolen, yeah. stealed, 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 taken. Not uh, good. Um, yeah, I did so many in the area. Look at the uh, rock box. Yeah, yeah. San Antonio. yeah, Rockbox. Great, that great was venue. the one that I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was me and me and my roommate were like co-headlining that show. Who is your and roommate? Craig Fergola. Have you met Craig? I'm sure you have. Is He's... the gay guy who tried to hang himself? No. Oh. Is there a gay guy who tried to hang himself? There's always a gay guy trying to hang himself. <laughs> Probably, but That's no. That's how you get out of a, a gay relationship. You hang yourself? Suicide. A lot of my gay friends kill themselves when they have romantic <laughs> problems. I, yeah, it was unfamiliar. They kind of mate for life. They're like yeah. doves that way. Yeah. No, he's a he's a heterosexual, heterosexual, non hanging guy. Living with another guy his same age. Right. No, actually, he's older. That's than pretty me. Ernie and Bert. Yeah. And he's, you know what everyone says about Ernie and Bert? They're gay. They're puppets. <laughs> they can't fuck. So anyone who thinks puppets are gay are fucking idiots. But Elmo did bang a bunch of kids. Sure. Do you know that guy? The 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 puppeteer or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you can't like see when Jim Hansen died. I think it left a lot of wiggle room for predatorial type puppeteers to mm -hmm. get jobs in the industry. Old Jim wouldn't have any baby bangers I working mean, any of his shit. Here's the thing: I think that 
any any occupation where you're spending a lot of time with with children, yeah, you're gonna attract the wrong crowd. You know, yeah. Some people want to. You know, some people really want to help those kids. But what some about, people really want to fuck those kids. I know, but you, you know, never. But how do you th- weed them out? How I do you never. Weed them? When I heard that there was child predators, first of all, Mister Rogers, mm-hmm. I would let him jerk off in front of me. Sure, yeah, trustworthy guy. Wait, was Mr. Rogers the one that served in the military, right? Was that Mr. Rogers? I think it was, right? Was it in like the Marines or he was a Navy SEAL or some shit? I don't think he was look, physically. Maybe that was a maybe that was a rumor, but I think there was I think it was Mr. Rogers, right? Fuck, I'm almost tempted to to Google that. Jamie, can you Google that? Jamie, Google that? Yeah. Jamie's my parakeet. I do want to get some birds, just rabbit, crows. I'm gonna get a pillowcase. That would case. be sick, dude. That's what you, that's what the place is missing. Crows. Is crows. Oh, you yeah. wait till you see. The Not caged either, just hanging out, flying this is around. Just, this is just the beginning of what I'm about to do. There's my sons. Oh, the fleshlight twins. Man, they're growing they're, up. They're well. working. A, uh, growing up strong. Carnival. Um, what do you got coming up? Oh man, there's... how is it like? We're doing comedy here now. Oh. Like, how many times are you going out to do spots? So you've been doing, what, comedy two, three, four years? Yeah. Six months? <laughs> I've been doing it about two years, yeah. I guess. Well, it's weird. I started when I was a kid, oddly enough. like at Magician? No, like, actually trying to do stand-up. Oh. And then... Um, what age? Like, 12. Really? 13, yeah. What was the... There must have been something pretty... <clears throat> well, uh, affect you in stand up to make you want to attempt to put yourself in kind of stress. Really? Dave Attell, yeah. That's the man. Yeah. That's the 100%. man. 100%. That's my, I saw that's my Dave, favorite. I saw Dave Attell and I was like, that. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, and then he actually He's introduced coming to town. me. I know, yeah, Moon yeah. Tower. And then yeah. he introduced me to my all time favorite comedian, which is a guy who took on, t- him and uh, Doug Stanhope both took on tour a lot, which was Sean Rouse. And Sean Rouse was, I mean, that is probably my all-time favorite. Really? Comedian. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'll show you some videos I have of Sean later. No shit. Fuck yeah. yeah, dude. I dude, I used to listen to Spilled Milk mm-hmm. like it was like my bedtime story. I was okay. put on Spilled Milk and like crawl up and go to bed. It was just, I mean, in my opinion, the best comedy album of all time. But I mean, Sean my, and I coincidentally not related. It, not related. Not related. Not related. Not related. Um, I mean, that's the only reason I did this fucking podcast. Do you know <laughs> that we? <laughs> That me and him lived in the same building? No, where? In Echo Park. No shit. In Los Angeles. Shut Co- the coincidentally. Fuck up. Did you know his girlfriend also? Yeah. Or his wife? She was just uh, in town, I think, shortly, about a month ago. Oh, no shit. She did a, a secret show. Oh, she's a comedian as well? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And That's I crazy. think she talks a lot about being a prostitute. Cool. It's some of her hook, uh, stuff. But, you got to uh, introduce me, man. That would be like. Yeah, it'd be an I, honor, man. She was just passing through, from what I what I was told. But um, he, uh, we used to trade things for things. His medications uh-huh. for my medications. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And yeah, yeah. No, this is totally true. We lived. I I um I moved into a artist space at, under a bridge, in Echo Park. It's everything that you're thinking. It looked like Fight Club. It had a small theater in it and a liquor license. I lived in a corner. By the stage <laughs> for this play, I actually yeah. slept in the window of a store that was attached to the theater where I rented it out. Anyway, Sean, so people would pass by and just see you pass out, like, "Oh, this is some interesting." I had to art. put tinfoil on <laughs> the oh. window and stuff <laughs> because it was the only place because it was such an open area. Yeah, that uh, uh, I had it had a kitchen, uh, a couple of makeshift bedrooms, a back area and stuff. It was pretty gnarly. Uh, concrete uh, was pretty beat up. But uh, Sean lived in the apartments directly above where I lived under his. I lived under his building. I li- no I'm a troll. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. lived under a bridge. Yeah. Under a building, as you would think. That's where you'd think I'd live. Not like this. There's a swimming pool. No, I know your place is way nicer than mine. I thought. Uh, I thought. <laughs> you thought there was gonna be a into, box dude. of cat shit kicked across the floor. And just burnt, shit covered <laughs> knives and blood soaked condoms. Yeah. I just vacuumed. <laughs> I just, I have to, I have to have it. My, I literally live in a hotel standard. Yeah. Like it looks like this looks like a, a hotel. It's clean. Everything's tidy and uh, civilized. I mean, uh, but the previous I, tenants, God rest their souls, were you know. <laughs> they, they hey, what do you up. think I made these lampshades out of? 
that fat chick's back, I got two meters square off down to the that's, knee and ankles. That's a good yield. That's a good yield. It's good for skin <laughs> yield. <laughs> if you're a skin farmer like me, I got a good yield. But uh, definitely David Tell. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm glad you're a fan. I've never heard anyone gush uh, about Sean oh, as, as Brilliant, a comedian. Dude. I mean, he's one of the... There's... Like, I know you can appreciate this, but for my money, and I was talking to somebody about this recently, like, I don't oh, think he there was... has to get his heart medicine before oh, that's he right. come yeah. down. He'd yeah. go, hold on, I'll be right down. Let me get my heart medicine. And I always love that. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to no, that... put that little Parmesan cheese on your meatball. Ball <laughs> meat. It was <laughs> just knowing Sean, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, for me, like the thing that I loved most about Sean, um, <clears throat> There, there was nobody who could take a more uncomfortable or morbid subject, flip it in a way that was not just palatable, but would well, make you start just it. laugh. He would start the, fucking, on, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen him bite people's faces. He gets bitey. He used to bite people. You know that. No, I didn't know that. Do you want to hear a funny story? Absolutely. Please tell me okay. a funny Sean Rouse story. So, uh, comedy. This is like a dream come true for me, by the way. This is hearing, uh, the, hearing the dirt on. Uh, Sean Rouse. Look, you know, the the comedy store as a whole is like a Bermuda Triangle for comedians. You never sure, know yeah. who you're going to see. Yeah. Everybody from, you know, uh, uh, um, and, look, it is, you know the drill. Yeah. And um, um, Sean Rouse, Mike Faverman, mm-hmm. Tom Rhodes. Oh, yeah. Jason John Whitehead and myself are all kind of holding court. And when I say that, we're all sitting around. We're trying to keep Sean from attacking people at the bar. And he's dropping hard end bombs loudly and biting people on the shoulders. Ah! And we just pull him in like he's a, uh, he was shit court, right? <laughs> we're, I, we're all keeping an eye on our pals and stuff. And he's, ah, it's Saturday night at the store. People have come in from Australia to see fucking Jerry Seinfeld. And now they're getting bitten at the bar by a very white guy throwing hard ends. And we're laughing. But we don't want anyone to get it the wrong way and grapple him. Because he is not. A, he's just. Ah, yeah. ah, and then he. Ah, my fucking arm. You hear somebody. Ah, we tow him back in. <laughs> so I'm stoked because. Uh, Tom uh, I'd seen on advertisements I knew he was American But I was one of the most traveled Maybe the, the most traveled ever American comedian Rhodes? Yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. For, From the United well, He had a talk show In Holland yeah, 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 Holland, yeah and, and I would see him in various comedy clubs in London, Like his po- po- uh, old photos too I go, this guy's been out here for a while I don't see any Americans on here Yeah Like Rick Overton I'd see some mm-hmm. stuff like that at the store and um, so I'm stoked because my roommate, former roommate uh, and fellow Canadian comedian who started comedy in Scotland on a photo scholarship, okay. Jason John Whitehead, who I lived with London for a few years. I think we were roommates. Mike Faverman and um, myself, we're all having a little comedy powwow. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy, uh, comedian, comes up um, and he's hammered and he's making gestures at everybody at the table. Keep in mind, Tom and Mike are sitting next to each other. We've been talking for about an hour, but we've all, a lot of us have all just kind of met together the first mm-hmm. time face to face. And Tom turns to Mike and says, I'll give you 20 bucks if you knock this guy out. And Mike stands up and blasts this guy right in the face on a packed. People are trying to get in line to see whatever. Yeah, yeah. And now there's the shirts are coming off, tables. Sean's still attacking people, completely oblivious. Mouth first or teeth yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not even interested in our scuffle. He's fighting demons in the skies with his teeth and yelling hard. And people are like looking around, what the fuck is this shit? Hilarious. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Sean. Man, what I mean, I... <clears throat> I was very fortunate to see him live a couple of times um, before he passed. Because he only he passed away in like 2018, like it was somewhat recently. But man, my my all time favorite. I, That's whenever great. Whenever people ask me who my favorite comedian is, it's such a it's such an obscure comedian to have as like your all time favorite. But I mean, 
Yeah, Sean Rouse, man. That dude. That's the thing, right? Like, how many album? If you had to lay out a series of stand-up... Well, let's use CDs as an example. Right, right. You've got... Okay, the most popular CDs, mm -hmm. albums, hours that have been put out that year. Right. And then you put your favorites under it. And then you play the popular ones with your favorites. You're mm -hmm. like, none of this is any good. Yeah. These are yeah. the guys. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. I mean, yeah. ah. there it is. <sighs> Nothing like a good horse piss. Yeah. Oh, dude. Beautiful. What? I, I could see your uh, your closet from the bathroom. I don't know why I expected anything but black clothing in there. Yeah. But it was really just a sea of black. There's, I think you had one red t-shirt in there. I was like, wow, all right. That's my... Uh, Diversifying a little bit. My underwear are the only things that have color. Yeah. Brown and red. <laughs> Looks like a cross between a Japanese flag yeah. and a coffee filter. Sure. <laughs> so... um. That's why I only wear G-strings now. Yeah. Because if I'm ever in a jam, I've got an eye patch yeah. <laughs> or a tourniquet. Um, what, um, when are you going on the road? Good Man, question. We, yeah. I'm, I'm, We're all waiting. Yeah. I just saw an announcement. Nine Inch Nails just canceled all their live performances for the rest of the year. Big, like COVID shit, I'm assuming. That's how I measure <clears throat> society's health standards by, by what willing what Trent is, Reznor is willing will to do. do. <laughs> yeah, Slipknot's out. By yeah. the way, I got tickets. Well, I mean, they, with, they're I all with, dying, if you haven't noticed. Oh, so. fuck. I know. Poor Joey. Yeah, RIP. I got a, uh, a picture at the Metal Hammer Awards with uh, Paul Gray and Joey. Really? Like this um, from, geez, 2005? Yeah. Six? I want to do some more metal shit, man. Yeah. I want to see some more metal. Lamb of God and uh, Megadeth just played last night. But uh, Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I did want to go to that like, show. With um, like Trivium and somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With like the Austin 360. Is that where they were playing? I think so. Yeah. I think so. There's an amphitheater thing coming up with Slipknot, Code Orange, Beaver 33 or something like that. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Should be good. I did see a local band. That Ooh, I've been waiting to see for about 30 years. A lo Austin local band. Mm -hmm. Okay, who was it? Skate Nigs. I don't know Skate Nigs. Skate Nigs is a Austin uh, musical group from, I want to say, they were on the same wax tracks with like Ministry and, and okay. all the early 80s, 90s industrial bands. I think he the singer got into heroin or something mm -hmm. like that, as most industrial bands did if they were... What? I actually have a friend's uh, a friend's band who from San Antonio that used to tour with Ministry quite a bit. Ooh, they were called uh, Pitbull Daycare. Cool. Yeah. Industrial or just metal? Industrial. Yeah. It was like industrial metal stuff. Like they got signed. Um, what year are they touring with Ministry? Oh man, I I would have to. Uh, they toured with them quite a bit. Like they went on um, the stories. Oh, dude, I can't even imagine. I read Al Jorgensen's biography, mm -hmm. and I know they barely touched on it. He says, <laughs> if you remember the 90s, you weren't there. Yeah. Uh, some girl used to fuck a dog in their studio in front of them. What? Regularly, yeah. It was brought up in the book. Coming full circle to banging <laughs> animals here. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, I think Mick Jagger and David Bowie were banging because they... And fucked everybody. Yeah. And all the animals. And all the animals. Yeah. How many times do you think you were on the road with Led Zeppelin and there was farm animals in the gang? No, somebody's bang? putting their dick in there. Yeah. There's totally people banging animals with girls. Why not? Why not? Why? I mean, what's, what's the problem? Who are we hurting, America? Why is this illegal? The food's going to taste different. <laughs> You know what I mean? You can have unfucked or fucked. Yeah, that's going to be on the menu. It's going to be more tenderized. Do you want your pig cummed in or uncummed in? Because it really uh, it determines the flavor a lot. One's more salty. Have you ever shot a pig? No. In the face? No shot with your dick. <laughs> Jason Rouse, everybody. Jason Rouse. Um, no, I want to do some pig hunting. Yeah, like boar, like wild boar and stuff like that. That'd no, Sixth Street, <laughs> you know, University, three fifty, Lazy Eye, Hairy Armpits, Petrulli Oil, Dump Truck, <laughs> Pig Hunting. It's there's, heavy. There's no the shortage pig. for sure. 
Oh yeah, I had to stop going down the Sixth Street. I was getting pink eye the time I got home. <laughs> There's so much ass down there; it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, Sixth Street, man. Sixth Street's weird. Is, it's is not... it? Because it looks like it's it. That's about as big as it can go. Was it ever? Because I know by South by Southwest, it must be like insane. The whole city, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. South by Southwest. Oh, I guess you haven't really experienced a South by Southwest yet. This fucking jerk off doesn't know we're recording right now. No, this jerk off doesn't know we're recording right now. What a fucking jack. Yeah, uh, you haven't experienced a South by Southwest yet. No. Right, since you've been I don't here. hang out with nerds. Yeah. Well, yeah. The whole thing is a tool concert. Yeah. There's it's, no... I looked at the comedy lineups, and uh, not to mention they don't pay the comedians or whatever. Right. But um, it's an exposure thing more than it is financial. But yeah, that's well, that's the that's how they exploit talent is they say it's good yeah. for your career. Yeah. Well, if you're building my career, it's good then, for you. But right. I'm building my career. Right. And I get paid. Yeah. Ass lick. Yeah. South by I mean, South by Southwest is insane, at least, you know. Prior to, I don't know what it's going to look like when they try to bring it back. I'm sure the, the whole COVID thing's not going away anytime yeah. soon. But I mean, before, I mean, literally anywhere where they can put up a stage is now a music venue, right? Yeah. I mean, all, all the bars are already music venues. Mm -hmm. Every, any place that has a bar is now a music venue. Yeah. And then it was even to the point, I mean, Punk parking rock lots. on the sidewalks, yeah. gas stations, parking, car yep. washes. Yeah. Yeah. Churches, schools, yeah. anywhere where they can put music, it, it's going to happen. That would be a great wild. place to shoot a special is in a high school gymnasium. Yeah. And just keep the... Just lunch ladies handing out sloppy joes. Can you get away with that? Get the you no. Know, remember on school trips, you'd have to get a release form mm -hmm. saying that you were able to go out and die at the school's <laughs> I'm time. Willing to risk, yeah, death. penetration from an adult to be able to be here. No one trying to fuck us in this school, but I also had a very bad case of Crohn's, so mm -hmm. I was already muddy from being myself. Yeah. Um. No, I did use that as a deterrent, though. I constantly would have uh, herbal laxatives in my school lunches mm -hmm. to let everybody know I wasn't ready to I'm not, mate. Not, 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 I'm not welcoming. Not to be fucked with. No. No, every corner of skunk? Yeah. They well, spray. Not, no, but yeah. I used to corner skunks with brooms and get sprayed in the mouth and then go to a house party that weekend and tell everybody I got this new French cologne called Skunk Piss. Uh, it's very didn't musky. catch on. I'm assuming <laughs> no, but I'll tell you. I was thinking about this. You know, brute cologne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that, that was smells like horse shit. Yeah, it's, it's very so bad. bad. Boat in tears is what <laughs> brute smells like. Boat in tears. I, I had a large bottle of it, a uh, multiple bottle. Because look, you get the Christmas basket gifts. Yeah, with brute, yeah. Some soaps and stuff. Well, who's going to go through a liter of brute? Yeah. Well, every Christmas. That would be the go-to gift. So now I've had like a gallon of brute cologne, yeah. filled up the biggest bottle at the top, and soaked my whole. I drenched my shirt into it, and then I'd go to a parties, and and as soon as I walked in, people would get headaches, they would get migraines and nausea. Who's the asshole? Where is that brute? Like and and like I'm supposed to say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was gross. I'm soaked in it. And what I didn't know, highly flammable, by the way. I'm sure. Highly it's, flammable. It smells highly flammable. I'm in there smoking, reeking a brew. And my friend says, you know you're pretty much soaked in gasoline right now. And then he squirted it on the stove and flicked a fucking match in it. And it went whoosh. And I started smoking a little closer out of the range of the thing, of the fire. But yeah, I wasn't really good in social situations. But yeah. thanks for having me on your show. Uh, what do you got? What do you Thanks got coming up? Coming. What do you got coming up? Oh man, I I've I've got a few things. Um, Cause local you're, stuff. You're but, out. Let's be honest. Like doing shows three times a week. Trying, yeah. yeah. I mean, when um, you know, I'm very very Active. lucky to get yeah booked as much as I do. Um, yeah. And then you know when I'm not like doing a paid show, obviously like just grinding and trying to write new stuff. But um, fuck, I'd have to check my calendar. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. If you want to know um, where to find me on shows at the Ben Horn and Instagram. And I, I post all my shows. I got some fun stuff coming up. I'm doing a, a debate show with Zach Bogus here soon. Oh, but, cool. Um, that, so that'll be fun. But that's going to be great, actually. Yeah. Do you yeah. got the old format. 
of the show and how it's going to work? Yeah. So like basically we, we get a, a topic um, and we're, we're each supposed to take a position and we just have to debate each other, debate mm-hmm. club style. So yeah. that'll be super fun. Um, Do you get the subjects doing- that night they pull from the audience or are you guys no we get them a little bit ahead of yeah. time so we get we get some time to to prepare uh-huh. our, our our fine our opening statements final argument you know that kind of thing it'd um, be interesting it for you guys to have uh the the subjects that you're defending submitted then you have to disappear mm-hmm. and then come back and defend it even though you're a uh, four or foe yeah i don't know they had a great show at the uh, comedy store called Fuck. Oh, it's like the wrongest learning, but they'd, they'd go backstage with the newspaper articles mm. and then have to come up and do uh, debates based on those subjects yeah, and yeah. stuff. I can't remember. But uh, Ben Horn. Horn. No, but your Instagram. <laughs> I thought you were asking my name. No, no, but that <laughs> happens sometimes. I check right out. This oh, is- it, my, my Instagram at the Ben Horn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, have you ever seen uh, anything like this before? No, what the? Jeez, are these the secrets? No. Is this how we're going to get out of Af- Afghanistan? Is no. this what we just uh, found? Actually, this is, I'm going to give you this. The, you can appreciate maybe. And it's funny. It's, this is a kill your local rapist. Sick. Like, cool, right? And then uh, this is from uh, Conjoined Clothing. This is Hello. This is Son of Sam. Is that Son of Sam? David Is Berkowitz. Isn't yeah. this David Berkowitz? Dude, these are going to look sick on my bumper. Yeah. And um, I don't know what... To, I think that's a Swedish word. This is a Swedish uh, company friend of mine. Here's another uh, conjoined. These are Siamese twin babies. Ooh, these are your kids. Dude. Uh, but yeah, I think the uh, Son of Sam and the uh, Kill Your Local Rapist. What do we got here? No Lives Matter. Ooh, that's, that's a good... That's, that's going to get you Controversial statement, but... Uh, that's a... <laughs> Uh, uh, that will get you handicap parking. Um, but yeah, thanks for being on the show. Enjoy your stickers. Dude, thanks, man. I appreciate it. This I prefer fun, to man. put them over the girl's mouth opposed to on the fridge. <laughs> Check out Ben Horn. And uh, we're eventually going to have a part two to this uh, before the end of the year where we're actually firing off some, uh, some high powered uh, ammunition. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, guys. Make sure you uh, go to uh, Jason Rouse's uh, Patreon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Listen to on Spotify. And uh, check out my movie on uh, Amazon. It's called Spare Parts. And uh, also on October 30th, I will be releasing my stand-up special that everybody's been waiting for for over two years is finally going to be released. So we are very close to completion. I'm very meticulous on how this is going to be presented and uh, how bad it's going to affect society. Thanks for listening to Safe Word. I've been Justin Beaver, and you've just wasted an hour of your time. Thank you. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine.